Welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. We're in the next video in our series for zero waste processing for lemons. I bought a case of organic lemons from Azure Standard um, and I got them cheaper, including the cost of shipping, than I could buy non-organic lemons at our nearest grocery store, which is about an hour away. Um, so today we're doing zero waste processing and that means that I'm going to show you a way to use every single part of these lemons and none of it's going to go to waste. Today we're processing the juice. Now when I ordered this case of lemons, I scoured the thrift stores for a juicer because I didn't have one. I have the kind of juicer that you put the whole thing in and the whole pulp comes out, but that's not what I'm looking for. I was looking for a citrus juicer. So I got this guy, it was like a dollar something, so that was great. Um, except I think I have greatly overestimated my endurance of um, squeezing lemons. We do try to do things without power around here, but I think if I process this whole case of lemons this way, um, I might not have a hand when I'm done, and I'd probably like to use my hand, you know, in the next week or so. Um, so, I cheated a little bit. And I looked at the cost of citrus juicers. First, I asked all my friends, do you have a citrus juicer that I can use? I don't know, I probably asked five or six different people and nobody had one except for this kind. Um, and so I looked on Amazon and I looked at juicers and some of them were like the hokey plastic variety and they were $20 and I thought, well, it's probably, I don't know that it'll even handle a case of lemons. I did find this Cuisinart one. Now it's new, but when I'm looking at purchasing things on Amazon, sometimes it'll have selected buy new. And that's your little clue to say, ooh, scroll down a little bit because sometimes they have um, used ones that are like new. And all the things that I have bought used like new just means the packaging is messed up um, or there's a little dent in it. So this guy was supposed to have a dent, but he's perfect. He does not have a dent and I saved six bucks on him. So I think I paid less than $25 for a Cuisinart one or I could have paid $20 for you know, a junkie, everything's made of plastic one. Um, so hopefully this will work out. We've gotten snowshoes like $10 cheaper doing it that way. And the, just the packaging, the plastic packaging wasn't there. Like who cares about that stuff? I got Mr. Reva pair of extra tough boots for $15 cheaper because they went to somebody else, they tried them on, they didn't fit and they sent them back in the original box and the original packaging. So I am not going to juice all these by hand because that is not um, interesting to me, but we're not going to throw any of this away, right? we got to save this part. And all the seeds that fall in here, we're saving that too. Because in another video, I'll show you how to use the seeds. Okay, I got something to hold my juice. I got something to hold my seeds. And um, just cut the lemons in half. And you can juice them. If you have a hand juicer and you don't have a whole case of lemons like I do, I would suggest using that. But the sun is out enough today that we can handle a little bit of extra power on our little solar system we have. So I'm just gonna get all these juiced up. Actually, let's see how it goes. I have never used this thing before, so let's see. Ooh. I'm a little scared of this thing, let's see. Oh! It's definitely strong enough, I was worried about that. That's why I didn't wanna buy the cheap ones. And then, done. And all the seeds are in the little well. Perfect. Yay, way fast. There we go. Awesome. We'll see how much juice we get out of all these lemons. <laughs> you can bear down on this thing so hard that it'll remove the membrane. better figure out what I'm doing with the membrane. Didn't really have plans for that. I might just cheat. That just might go in the pig bucket. That's pretty cool. Okay, we got all those lemons juiced, the lemons that were in the bowl, and some lemons that I had removed the zest from in another video. Um, we ended up with 14 cups of juice, and here's reason number 27 and a half why I really like this juicer now. There was two parts for me to rinse out and I don't have um, full-time running water. We have gravity fed water that we haul every drop of it. Um, and so all I had to do was rinse this stuff out. That was really great. 
I have about two, maybe three cups of seeds and pulp mixed, and I will um, deal with the seeds in another video. So we're going to set that aside. So this 14 cups of juice probably represents maybe a little more than half of that case because I did use some lemons for some other, other purposes. Um, but on with the show. Okay, we're back. We got things mostly cleaned up. I'm gonna strain this juice out before I use it for any of our other projects today. It is making a bit of a mess, but well, it is what it is today. If there's any bits of seeds left, I'll pull those out, but the pulp I'm gonna save um, to add into a project in one of our other videos about lemons. Okay, at this point, there's lots of things that you can do with this lemon juice. You can um, put it in a bottle and stick it in the fridge if you wanna use it right away. I don't know anybody that might use 14 cups of lemon juice right away, but good on you if you can do it. Um, lots of people like to pour it in ice cube trays. Each ice cube, each ice cube little well is about a tablespoon of juice. You can stick it in the freezer. And when you need a tablespoon of lemon juice, you just pop it out and throw it in whatever dish or whatever you need it for. You can also freeze it and save it for lemonade. Um, my freezer space is pretty limited and we live off grid. So I try to find ways that I can preserve food that does not involve um, continuous electricity like the refrigerator or the freezer. So right now we are going to can um, some of this lemon juice. If you're new to canning and this is not a familiar thing for you, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for the, um, the National Center for Food Preservation and you'll know everything you want to know about canning there. Of all the juice that I have here, the 14 giver plus um, cups, I'm going to water bath can eight of them in these half pint jars each half pint jar is a cup so we're gonna water bath eight cups um it's a very simple process you get a jar comes with a lid and a ring um i do reuse lids but um i'm not gonna go over that today for right now you just use the new ones okay <laughs> jar funnel goes in there you leave a quarter inch of head space which means that you fill it up to a quarter inch from the top. After we get all of our jars filled, then we take a paper towel, we wipe the rim, make sure it's gonna have a good seal. Now you wouldn't imagine, but lemons have a lot of sugar in them. Actually, lemons have more sugar in them than a strawberry does. That's from National Geographic for kids, so that's my source anyways. <laughs> you put the lid on, you put the ring on, we're gonna put it on finger tight, which means we wait just until the ring catches and then we're gonna turn it an eighth of the circumference of the jar. There we go, he's on there now. I'll get all these eight jars filled and cleaned and have their lids on them and I'll meet you at the water bath canner. Okay, we're at the water bath canner and I do things a little different because I live off grid and I have to really conserve my fuel resources. So, um, Traditionally, if you were going to water bath can, you would heat up whatever you were going to can first. So I would have heated up this lemon juice in a separate pot um, and heated it up to boil. Then I would put it in the jars and then I would put it in an already boiling water bath canner. But I don't do it that way because I don't want to use this extra burner's worth of fuel when the water bath canner is going to warm up on its own. So why can't the lemon juice warm up on its own in the water bath canner? Um, it would be unsafe for my jars if I boil the lemon juice, put it in here, and then put it in a cold water bath canner. Um, or it would also be unsafe if my for my jars if this was cold and I stuck it in a boiling water bath canner. They can shatter, um, and I don't want that. So what I do is I heat everything up at the same time. Now that's a little bit of, of I go rogue. If you know, um, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know there's plenty of things that I go rogue about. Um, but this is how I make canning work for our lifestyle on our off-grid system. So there's my caveat to that. Um, and remember in the description will be all the rules from the National Food Preservation um, Center. So we'll put all these in here. You wanna make sure there's at least an inch or two of water above the lids. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more water in here because I didn't get enough in there the first time. Then I'm gonna bring it up to boil. When it starts boiling, I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and then we'll let it cool down after that. Okay, on to the lemon curd, which I'm very excited about. 
You would think that lemon curd maybe is mostly lemon, but actually for one cup of lemon juice, use 11 eggs. So good thing it's egg season for us. Um, so here we go. Okay, the ingredients that we need for lemon curd, not that difficult. Um, we need two and a half cups of super fine sugar. I just put regular sugar, sugar in my Ninja and zipped it up so now it's thinner, <laughs> now it's finer. Half a cup of lemon zest, a cup of lemon juice, and we need seven egg yolks and four whole eggs. So a total of 11 yolks and four whites. Um, I'm doing it like that because uh, some of my eggs are gonna be goose eggs thanks to Miss Wiggles. Um, and then you're gonna need three quarters of a cup of butter. I'm just using half a cup, which is one stick because butter's expensive and I'm real sad that I even had to buy butter. I normally have goat butter, but it just, I have 16 gallons of frozen goat milk in my freezer downstairs and not time to make butter. Maybe soon, <laughs> hopefully soon, because my freezer is getting too full. There is gonna be some goose egg, chicken egg conversion, and so I hope it's not confusing. One chicken egg is this big, a goose egg is this big, and three chicken eggs can fit inside a goose egg. So this is going to um, contribute three eggs worth of the recipe, okay? So, sorry, my eggs are rolling around over there. So if I put a whole goose egg in there, and if you've never cracked a goose egg, you know that it is like, the shell is like concrete. So you kind of have to really bash it good. So that is three of my four whites and three of my 11 yolks that are in there now. Okay. We'll do one whole chicken egg. That'll be, now I have all the whites in there I need. Now there's four whites and four yolks. So now I just have to put more yolks in there. Seven more yolks to be exact. So seven yolks will be one tiny yolk. And I have two more goose eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna separate the whites out of these. I'll use them maybe for an omelet in the morning for Mr. Reeve and all the other yolks will go in here. And then I save the yolk or I save the shells. I dry them out um, and then I put them in the Ninja and I feed them to the chickens um, as their calcium supplement so that I don't have to buy oyster shells or other chicken supplements for them. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna whisk this all up and I'll meet you at the stove in a moment. Okay, before we get working over here at the stove, I wanted to let you know that I mixed our one cup of lemon juice with our two and a half cups of super fine sugar. I just happened to mix it in here. I didn't really use the Ninja to stir it up. Just a spoon. <laughs> because, and I wanna let that sit a little bit because I want the sugar to dissolve completely. So I'm gonna let that sit probably 20 or 30 minutes really before we get going here. And that'll give us, that'll give our lemon juice time to water bath and be done so it won't be bubbling in the background either okay our lemon juice is done let's turn it off okay we got our jars out i think most of them have sealed already our pan's still back there cooling down but we're gonna make a double boiler out of this um, pan and just that pyrex bowl that i was mixing the eggs in because it can handle the heat if you have a double boiler this will be great um i do not um so i'm gonna make one just like i said as a pan in a bowl um this water needs to be 180 degrees, so at your house you'd fill the pan up with water and heat it up till it was 180. But I don't want to pay to heat up water that I already have boiling hot water out of that water bath canner. So I just dump some in here. I'm going to make sure it's the right temperature and then all I have to do is maintain the heat on it. So in this recipe for this lemon curd, it's not the pan and the water that heats the lemon curd. It is the steam, okay? Now this is 175, 176 degrees. So we're real close. I'm just gonna turn it on low so it can maintain its temperature. Look at that, I didn't have to pay to heat up more water. Okay. Before I put all of my eggs and ingredients on this pot to cook, I am gonna mix it all down here first, okay? So. There's my lemon zest. The mixture from my lemon juice and sugar. It's nicely combined. Here's my hunks of cold butter. And 
we're going to stick it on here. The goal is that the pan, that the bowl does not touch the water. Oop, a little bit it did, so I need to dump a little bit of this out. Just a little bit, though. Okay. Now we'll see if I can make the magic work. So we need to bring these eggs up slowly to temperature, otherwise we're gonna end up with scrambled eggs. Um, and if that happens, you won't be seeing this video. <laughs> and we'll try again. <laughs> That's why I saved a whole bunch of lemon juice. Sometimes things work out the first time you try it and sometimes mm, it takes a bit. Okay. I'm gonna switch at this point to a rubber spatula. Um, oh, did you hear my jar? My jar sealed. Um, I'm going to switch to a rubber spatula because I really want to be able to scrape all the stuff off the bottom and make sure no egg cooks on there. Bit by bit, we're going to bring this up to 180 degrees. When it reaches 180 degrees, I'm going to take it off of the um, off of the stove and off of the boiler. Actually, I'll probably set it here on some hot pads. Um, but we're going to take it off the heat and then um, we're supposed to keep stirring and there's supposed to be some magic that occurs and it'll thicken. So wish me luck. <laughs> Okay, I've been stirring for about 10, 12 minutes now. We're at 115 degrees. And we'll just keep going. If you ever wanna buy the worst fast read thermometer ever, you should buy that one. But I bought it, so I'm sticking with it till it dies. Hopefully it will die soon. Maybe it'll have an accidental death. Who knows? <laughs> we'll keep stirring, meet you back in a sec. Okay, we're at about 150 degrees now, Fahrenheit. Um, it's been probably another 10 or 12 minutes that I've been stirring. And I wanna show you, sorry, let me get my hand out of the way. I use this rubber spatula so that I can go along the bottom of the pan and really make sure there's no scrambled eggs happening down there. If there ended up to be a little bit of scrambled eggs, I could strain it out with a mesh strainer um, and kind of push the curd through the strainer, but I don't want to do that. Most people strain it out because they want to get the zest out, um, but I don't want to get the zest out. I, mean, I guess when you can it, it discolors a little bit over time, like there's little darker spots, but I don't know, there's nothing wrong with that to me. Holy buckets, we've been stirring for 25 minutes now. We've got a couple more minutes. And then when we get it off of here, we're gonna stir for five more minutes. This, this recipe is a little hard for me because um, patience is not my best virtue. Um, but I will tell you that I'm uh, fixing to start to get ready to work on being more patient. Okay, I think we made it. We got to 170 degrees. It's definitely thicker, so. Turn the heat off, put it on the stove here. And now we stir, shocker. <laughs> okay, we stirred for our five minutes. Let me show you what it looks like. It's all shiny in there, okay. Still a little thin um, from what I expected it to be, but I think it'll, it'll thicken as it cools. Let's get our famous taste tester out and see what he thinks. Okay, Mr. Reeve, no pressure. Tell everybody how much you like your wife's lemon curd. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's in that? Uh, two cups of sugar, a cup of lemon juice, and 11 sugar. eggs. <laughs> 11 eggs? Yeah. That tastes like lemon bars. Yeah, I use the goose eggs. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, guess what? What? I got more curd fixings right there. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Reeve. <laughs> Chickens make lemon curd. They do. <laughs> no, no, they're the best. Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Everybody likes you, Mr. Reeve. You're a nice man. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take our lemon curd that's still nice and hot, fill our jars. We're going to give it a half an inch of headspace, and we're going to water bath it for 15 minutes for half pints. Okay, our lemon curd came out pretty good. Look at how pretty it is. It's nice and thick. I also did go ahead and make the raspberry lemon curd. It's still warm, but it came out kind of a weird color. But all I did to alter the recipe was um, I added a cup of raspberries and an extra egg, and I took the lemon zest to about half. 
As always, thanks for joining us on Flat Tire Farm. I hope you enjoyed this video in the series of Zero Waste Lemon Processing. Hope you watch the other videos in the series. I'll leave the playlist at the end. Stay warm out there.